Hi, this is Mike from Stagecoach Road Sewing, and we've got a really awesome machine to share with you today. This is a Singer 221K, better known as the Featherweight. It's also a powerful, steel gear driven, straight stitch sewing machine. This is the one that has the fold up bed for uh, easy storage. It comes in a little case, just barely bigger than the, what you see here. Very popular with quilters and crafters. Um, people who do a lot of uh, nice, neat, straight stitching. It's just been restored, uh, taken apart, tension removed, the motor dismantled, the hand wheel off, uh, all the covers opened up, and uh, uh, it's been cleaned out, and, uh, well, just, it's in excellent condition, running and, running and sewing uh, pretty near perfectly. This, uh, this is where you'll find your bobbin and bobbin case. Real easy to access with the lift up bed like this. This is your bobbin case and the bobbin of course is inside it. We're going to uh, wind the bobbin here at the beginning of our video demonstration. Uh, to wind your bobbin, the first thing you're going to do is put the thread on the spool pin go through the top guide here, go down and wrap around between the two flat tension plates, and lift up on the thread. There's a, a tension spring here that you're going to pull up until the thread goes into the notch up here at the top. And once the thread is in the notch, any time you lift up on your thread, it's going to make your tension spring flex. So you go through the top guide between the tension discs, up into the notch up here, which puts the thread under the uh, check spring. And from there you go behind this long guide, right above the tension assembly, and then into the hole on the take-up lever. Put yourself a little thread and come down. There's a, another uh, guide here on the face plate, right? Uh, behind the tension discs. Another guide right here at the bottom of the tension uh, the face plate. And one last guide right down here at the needle. After you've gone through all the guides, you're going to thread the needle, and the needle threads in that direction. Once your needle is threaded, uh, you hold on to the end of your thread. Well, how's about it? That is how you thread <laughs> the top end of the sewing machine. But we're not threading the top end of the sewing machine, are we? We are threading the... We are filling the bobbin. So I'm going to just remove that spool and set it down there. And another spool of thread. Put it on the thread spindle on the spool pindle. Go through that upper thread guide down here to the bobbin winder tension. And then through any one of these holes in the bobbin. Uh, You press your bobbin winder down until this wheel is in contact with the uh, drive belt. And there is a clutch knob on the end of the machine here, right in the hand wheel, that you loosen. Quarter turn or so, eighth of a turn. Hold on to the tail end of your thread that's poking out of the hole in your bobbin up here. Uh, and then slowly cycle your machine until you get some thread on the bobbin then you can snip off that little tail. You don't need a lot of speed to do this.
That would be enough for our testing purposes. All right, thread back up here through that top guide down onto the spool. Now back to this. Um, I have a hold of the needle thread here in case you can't see it. And while I'm holding on to the end of the needle thread, I'm going to go through after I tighten the Okay. After I tighten the clutch knob and put the bobbin back in the bobbin case, your thread is coming off the top of the bobbin here in that direction. You want to just lay that in the bobbin case, just like that, and guide the thread into this little angled slot on the side of the bobbin case and under the flat spring steel tension spring. You'll hear a little click when it pops into place. And you'll be able to feel just a very slight amount of tension when you pull on the bobbin thread. It takes very little tension on the uh, bobbin case tension. Okay, now I'm going to slide that on until it's firmly in place and the bobbin itself doesn't rotate. And now, back to holding our needle thread. We're going to cycle the hand wheel one turn and that will bring up your bottom thread. Lay your thread between the legs of the presser foot and around to the back of the machine. And we're ready to sew. I'm going to start with some lightweight uh, shirting type fabric. Might make a summer dress or a summer shirt out of this weight material. And let's see, we'll do about 20 stitches per inch. This is your uh, stitch length, by the way. At the very bottom is your longest stitch length. And as you go up, the stitches get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller until you reach the center where there is no movement at all of the of your uh, feed. Uh, and from there it starts going in reverse. Small stitches, then bigger, 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 bigger as you go up. So, we're going to go back down here into forward. And we're going to do about 20 stitches per inch. My mama always said start with the needle in the fabric. So here we go. You always want to bring your take-up lever to its uh, topmost position or even a little bit beyond before you try to pull the thread from the bottom. So, uh, we've got a nice, neat, well-balanced stitch. That'll look pretty on your quilt. Uh, and then we're going to sew some denim. This is fairly heavy denim from a pair of heavy-duty jeans. Uh, this is two layers of heavy denim. Again, a nice neat stitch, no stress or strain on there. We have two layers of heavy denim here. We're going to double that two layers to make four layers. 
and double it again to make eight layers of heavy denim. And again, this is a precision instrument if you're going to sew a lot of heavy duty stuff. Get yourself a, a really old mid century iron machine. Um. Yeah, I guess also a piece of leather just to show you that it will. This is split leather. This is about the weight that my uh, the nail bags on my tool belt are. So it's fairly heavy. So if you, if you got some heavy duty stuff you need to do, this will do it. So what else is there to say about this machine? We've got forward and reverse in uh, adjustable stitch length, bobbin winder, light, tension. If you uh, need more tension, you turn it clockwise a little bit. If you need a little less tension, you turn it counterclockwise. This knob up here is the presser on your the pressure on your presser foot. If you want more pressure on your fabric if you're sewing something a little heavier uh, uh, add a little more pressure if you're sewing something really lightweight you might have, might want to back it off uh, so you don't mark your fabric with the uh, feed dogs but there you have it featherweight restored ready to go and uh, this is going to uh, I'm going to put this up for less than what I've been seeing these go for. Mostly when I'm out and about uh, at antique stores and um, that sort of place, I usually see these going for $425 to $525. This one's going to be a little less than that. And uh, if you've come here from somewhere else, you'll find this on our website. And our website is Stagecoach Road Sewing. Com. We're out here on Stagecoach Road in the Coast Range of Oregon, hence the name Stagecoach Road Sewing. Uh, and while you're here, check out all the uh, beautiful restored mid-century machines, Japanese, German, American, Swiss, Swedish, uh, that we've restored and put up on the site. Um, and also check out the uh, free lifetime guarantee that comes with this machine and with every vintage uh, sewing machine that we restore. If you ever have a problem with it, uh, bring it back to us. And if it's something that we can fix, we'll fix it for free. Uh, you, of course, will pay for any parts or shipping. Um, but read the details on the website. Again, that's www. Forget the www. Uh, stagecoachroadsewing.com. We'll see you there.